Hello everyone and welcome back to the video here at Tableman. Thanks so much for tuning in. We're going to be playing with the deck that everyone loves to hate, which is Mu VMAX. Now, not too long ago, we had people saying Mu VMAX needs to be banned, Mu VMAX is too powerful, it's too oppressive, which reminds me of people saying that ADP was too powerful and too oppressive, myself included. And then Arceus started dominating and doing really well with a lot of different variants. And people were saying, Arceus is too good and too, too uh, oppressing. And then here we are, um, four months after Arceus was released, um, seven months after Mu Max was released, and then a month and a half or so since um, Palkia was released. And maybe when Giratina Vista comes out by Worlds, People will be saying, Giratina Vista is too powerful, blah, 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 right? In the end, the game's pretty balanced. It's clear that Pokemon, unless it's like a very dire situation, they will not be banning any cards. So from my point of view, complaining about the top decks doesn't help anyone become a better player, right? Um, if you're only trying to have fun and Mew VMAX keeps beating you and no one likes losing, right? Or I'd like to think so. Um, then I can understand the frustrations. But if you are trying to be a competitive player, which this channel focuses on, um, showcasing the, the requirements, mindset, the approach to becoming a competitive player in the competitive Pokemon scene, then um, you don't become a better player by complaining that a card is too powerful. If a card is too powerful, use it yourself. Yeah, exploit it yourself. Give yourself that advantage and go for it. And with that, Mu Max is definitely um, quite a few stages lower than it used to be in terms of raw power. Roxanne plus Pathopy is such a deterrent for Mu Max, and most decks um, have learned to deal with Mu Max. They always factor in Mu Max in a way to deter it into their building, or perhaps now we are approaching the point where Mu Max isn't as popular or powerful, and you can accept a bad matchup against it. At one point, Mu Max was the most popular deck, you couldn't accept that. But eventually, we might have reached this point. And given that um, analysis, that's when perhaps UV Max gets to shine again. When people are no longer playing high uh, dark type Pokemon counters in their decks, when people aren't playing as many paths to the peaks and they are relying on one path and one Roxanne, such as Palkia does. So there's a lot of merit to the deck. It's still very powerful. It's raw power. It's just there it's uncontested but because it is very obvious what it's trying to do each and every turn it's easy to prepare for and easy to account for now we have Mubi max using cross fusion strike to copy attacks from the bench and we get to copy meloida with the meloida seco doing 70 for fusion strike energy which we get to attach through Alyssa sparkle and we also get to copy techno blast with Mubi max we get to reduce damage taken with Oricorio, and then our whole deck focuses on drawing a bunch of cards and setting up ASAP, potentially getting a turn one knockout as well with Meloida, and that's why we have four battle VIP pass, four Ultra Ball, four Quick Ball, the Rotom Phone, the Crown Maddox, and um, even the Marnie as a way to deter our opponent's hand, but also sort of have a soft draw, along with four stadiums, that is how I personally battle by uh, Path to Peak. Other players are only playing three stadiums. I've seen lists that play two stadiums, which goes along with what I was saying that um, there's less counters overall against Mew Max, but then you also have still four Path to the Peak decks. So important to find that balance. This is what we're playing with today. Let's jump into a ladder after this message from our sponsors. If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. Looking for PTGO codes? Photon Store has all the latest sets and promos instantly delivered to your email. You can use Tailman code when checking out for 5% off. Card Market is Europe's largest online marketplace for Pokemon cards. Whether you're looking for sealed product or singles, vintage or the latest sets, just follow the link in the description to find what you need. This video is sponsored by the Pokemon TCG deck building website PokemonCard.io. We do get to go first. We also get again from an opponent so we're not going to be getting that turn one knockout we are up against a mirror match which is <laughs> a little awkward um as sometimes you don't want to go first in a mirror match but given this hand i will 
need to risk the crown matic on the echo and corn echo and corn will not be very important in this matchup and we do flip heads which is very very nice definitely gonna go grab a final vip pass here um i priced one genesect that's all we priced uh one power tablet all we priced in terms of pokemon then we priced one power tablet we priced a switch which could be problematic this turn we don't have to worry about a peak we didn't price any stadiums but i can definitely get rid of one uh, pretty safely i did price an alessa and i priced a fusion strike energy along with something else that i'm not exactly sure what it is but that's okay so decent prices in a way not the best not the worst i do need to establish these mm -hmm. Mm. all right so then this ultra wall i'll go ahead and play this this ultra wall i will go ahead and discard honestly i think it's the marty here the boss could be really good next turn um, i'll go ahead and grab a mew and then we have <laughs> a nice uh message recognizing that we are playing the exact same deck and there's the second battle vip pass which is fantastic all right so Part of me wants to do this. That means I only have one Genesect to be able to retreat. So maybe I should just accept the fact that my Genesect will go down. I will be giving up the two prizes and then play with that knowledge. Go Fusion Strike System number two out of three. And all right, I do find the escape room, so that could possibly help me in avoiding the KO this upcoming turn. I'd rather just lose one prize and this is where we get to punish my opponent for benching that Genesect. Oh, I hadn't used Fusion Strike System at all actually. I thought I had. Oh my god. <laughs> well, somehow I've managed to draw the two Fusion Strike energies that were in my deck in the first place. So now having that mellow and the active could come back to bite me in the butt. But we see the immediate escape rope right there. So you know what? You can have my view V. But I will say, there's no reason, there's no point in my opponent. Uh, well, first off, playing that energy before the battle VIP pass. Number two, benching that Genesect. Because then if they didn't immediately have the escape rope, that would have been bad, right? Now the fact that they've committed the energy to the Mew means I'm safe. And I also get to chase down the energy, potentially preventing my opponent from being able to one-shot me at any given point. Which is really, really good. Since I won't be able to for sure. I have no Fusion Strike energy in the deck. The last one is priced. That was a really weird choice from my opponent. Immediately committing this, especially when they had the battle VIP. They're just going all out on this. So are they planning on using Psychic Leap? I really wouldn't mind that. I actually would be okay. Wow, they're committing a power tablet too. And a boss. Oh my god. Wait, what? So the, your gen, your plan is actually to, okay. I mean, that's more understandable. Well, no, wait, what? Why, what? I was thinking then they could let, but no, if they play boss against Alessa, oh my gosh. I gave my opponent too big of a benefit of the doubt. I, I, they didn't even retreat. Like, what? They didn't even retreat. All right, I'm gonna get rid of the Chromatic. I definitely don't need that. Yeah, that was really weird and poorly executed by my opponent. On to the next one. All right, we won the coin flip. We get to go first. We have a decent dish hand. What I did see in the Mulligan though, we Mulligan, my opponent Mulligan as well. What I did notice is that they're playing a Lightning deck with Electrode, so probably Tapu Koko VMAX. So that could be scary. The Paralysis combined with a Path to a Peak combined with a Roxanne could definitely be pretty scary here. Uh, there's a flying Pikachu. Okay, never mind. Maybe it's not Tapu Koko. Uh, what? Okay. Um, so with this hand, I 
I'm not a big fan of this fighting the boss, so I'm, I'll start with the Mew Max. I do play three. I prized one. Okay, that's good to know. <clears throat> so I prize Mew Max. Fusion Strike, Double Turbo. Ultra Ball. Quick Ball. And Mew Alright, those are our six prize cards. We're gonna commit a stadium. I'm not super happy about it, but it is what it is. Um jeez. Ultra trouble where I view. Draw three cards and then I'll use the quick ball to get another Genesect. Discarding one of the two cards that I'll draw right now. Ugh. Well, that's not great. I feel like I'm going to commit the boss because I want the Alessa to be able to attack next turn. I still have no idea what I'm up against. Sucks, really sucks having two bosses orders down in the first turn. Super awkward draws, super awkward. Even more awkward everything. Uh, but oh well. It's the cards I was dealt with. It's the cards I have to play with. Nothing I can do about that. I threaten KO on the active next turn. And on pretty much anything that's in front of me next turn. Unless we get Varnita and then two Alessas are now at the bottom of the deck. Meaning the attack is now even harder to accomplish. Yep. <laughs> Between the two bosses orders lost and now the Alessa sparkles at the bottom. Things are rocky for sure. Well, no path to a peak, that's good. And now I can just retreat them a lot and take a knockout. So that Marnie was actually really good. Really, really good. So it's just flying Pikachu VMAX with Electro, which... I mean, it's how you can power up, sure, but... Clearly budget is not an issue for this person, so... This is just not a great deck overall. They don't even get the paralysis, they have one card in hand. So, to say we're in a good spot would be the understatement of the year. Um, I do want an Alessa, so I'm going to shuffle my deck off of the Stormy Mountains, even though clearly I don't play any Dragon or Lightning Pokemon. I'm just going to do that. And there we go. Now I can freely Alessa with these two friends. I don't even need to retreat anymore to take this KO. I don't need to risk anything, really. I was going to sneeze and then it went away. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, we're just melodious echo. I'm very confident this game's going to be over very quickly. I can't fathom what my opponent could possibly do other than give me a prize card, evolve into the VMAX. I mean, maybe they fly and I have to wait a turn. It's not a big deal. So they paralyze me, I have to switch, which is really good. If I had done it the other way and I attacked with Mew VMAX, then um, I would have needed a switching card anyways, even if they got the paralysis. I think we, it's like the game is basically over. If they attack with, I mean, they would have played a supporter if they had it, right? So this is probably, probably over. All right. Okay, we see our Raihan. We've already attached energy though. So the only way flying Pikachu V or V Max is doing like the other attack is through an electrode. Wonder if they play some sort of Crobat or other Well, I mean that's it, right? Just Crobat. That's the only way they could draw extra cards. Or any cards. This is taking a while. We're gonna 
sent a passive aggressive hello. 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 Like what card do you grab that helps you there? I guess it's a fortress, maybe. And you try to paralyze. Yep, it's all about the coin flips here. Maybe there's no flying Pikachu VMAX. Maybe there's just fly into Oblivion, but then when you flip tails, you lose. Or if you flip heads, then your opponent just goes balls and knocks out the bench, then, then you're dead. <laughs> so, all right. I will go ahead and do this. I will go ahead and do this. I will also go ahead and discard one, Crownmatic, Genesect. Draw a few more cards. Basically, now all the cards that matter to me are pretty much um, any sort of switching card that I could possibly need in order to bypass the paralysis. And I do have two escape ropes. I mean, sometimes that will not help me. So the only way my opponent beats me is by powering up this flying Pikachu B and um, flipping heads a million times over. So as long as that doesn't happen, I'm sure I'll draw the extra card. As long as that doesn't happen, we are good to go. I'm really surprised that I did find a stadium here, so I'll try to get it. Nope. Alright, so the Cleanwood Tangle might end up being super annoying, but it is what it is. We'll see. Alright. Right. So, do they go Electrode, power up, and then just hope for the best? Hope they never flip up tails again? Is that it? It's not an unreasonable plan. There's a higher than 0% chance that it works for them. However, I also have Echo in Core. So Echo and Corn plus boss wins me the game as well. And there we go. Alright. So I actually hope they don't flip the old tails. I hope they get average, which is the first thing to do, right? And then it's on me to find Echo and Corn, which I am 99% sure that it is not my last prize card. But I'm also unsure now that I definitely need it. I'm not sure. <laughs> Alright, they got the perfect party. So there we go. They pulled off their desired combo, right? So every turn there's a 75% chance that I can't do anything to the flying Pikachu V. Max, there you go. Um, the issue for them is that I can't Psychic Leap, so I never lose. Okay, now I get to do this. Now I also get to do this. Um, I'm not going to evolve. There's the Echoing Horn, so I just need to find that card. All right, so let's go Rose Tower for one. Don't want to play that. Let's go Fusion Strike System for three. I'm saving the Rotom Phone for the last dig. Uh, or for the Crowdmatic, sure. <laughs> that works too. All right, there we go. GG. Echoing Corn, a Flying Pikachu B. Could just be the Electrode as well. We're going to go Boss. We're going to get the well played and are going to Melodious Echo for the camp. And bada be bada boom, Fusion Energy is our last price card. Alright, one more. The coin flip. So unless it's a mirror match, that's pretty good. And even in a mirror match. Um, okay. So Duraludon Arceus. Going first is definitely a pretty big deal. Um, the stadiums could also be a big factor. This hand's awkward, for sure. Um, very, very awkward. I'm definitely going to commit the energy here. I'm definitely going to bench the Meloena. Then the question becomes, what card do I discard? The boss and the Mew could help me knock out an Arceus next turn and prevent the power-up. In order for me to draw any sort of card here, I do need to quick ball away something uh all right i'm not super happy about this i'm gonna discard this and then i'm gonna quick ball the crap matic 
I could have discarded the old cemetery and just kept my hand as it was, but I do like drawing this one extra card, and I do like uh, just trying to get a little bit farther ahead. Okay, the Rotophone is actually a pretty decent card. Um, definitely don't want those. Uh, might be the choice belt, or no, I think it's the Ultra Ball, right? Because next turn I go Evolve, and then I go Boss, and then I draw the Ultra Ball, and then I'll Gen Sect for. Well, maybe not. I think it's actually the choice belt. Alright, not the best start. Very slow, very um, low power level start. Collapse Stadium, annoying card for sure, but if that's all my opponent does here, no Arceus, no double turbo, pretty good. I'm assuming it's Arceus Duraldon, right? It could just be a different variant of Duraldon, but I don't think we've ever seen a successful other variant of Duraldon yet. Not to say that it's impossible to make one, but it is much harder. But as soon as I say that, I get immediately told off. <laughs> I get immediately shown. And okay. I still think getting the damage here is important, even if I somehow don't get an energy here, which is also very likely, in fact. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> um, all right. So, oh, I can't fusion strike, uh, fusion energy mix. Alright, that's okay. We'll do it next turn, hopefully. Sucks, but oh well. We tried. Right. There's the draw to Emax. I think Max Miracle will be pretty good here. Now that draw comes up the bench, though. Not great. But it is what it is. And we get Marty out of the Alessa Sparkle, which could have been a very hard. Alright, I really have no clue whatsoever as to what we are next. I do, however, find the energy so I can eventually just attack this Duraldon. Also get a Rose Tower. Now two Duraldons, three Duraldons. Alright, if only that one is a mistake though. <laughs> like they only needed to evolve too. I have no idea what I'm up next. Well, other than I mean. <laughs> okay, never mind. I know exactly what I'm up against. Uh, my opponent literally just saved me like a um, a turn, a, a hassle. Because now I just need to KO two Draldons instead of one Draldon V and then perhaps two Draldons on the bench. I'm gonna go Barney. I don't know what they have in their hand, but I'm looking to have a stronger board position, meaning double new VMAXs. Um, so I can interchange them, maybe even triple maybe maxes as well. Um, just drawing more cards in general. Right. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of one double triple. Oh, you know what? I'm not. I'm just gonna go max miracle here. The boss could be important. The power tower could be important. Right? The boss could just give me this draw then, which does not have. Power. 60 plus 160. I do need the power tablet next turn as well. See the poke gear. Okay, we're gonna see a neighbor. So I think goodbye, Meloetta. Honestly, I might need a third mini max. We'll see. Are they really not playing any Arceus V Star though? That's intense. Oh, they are. They're just playing a 3-3 Duralt on VMAX line. Plus the Mustard. Okay. Alright. Um. Alright. <laughs> My Marty. Into their Avery. Literally gave them everything. And they found the Stadium too. Jeez. Okay. Okay, they're down one switch. 190 is still short of the knockout. So let's grab you. Jeez, this is actually not ideal. Let's play this. <clears throat> we'll play this. 
will go boss. And we will go fusion strike system. If I lose these two energies, I lose these two energies. It's not the end of the But ooh, not drawing. The power tablet could be pretty sad. Alright. We're just going all in on the Gensects. There's the power tablet. That's pretty good. Let's uh, will I ever sight? So let's just draw one. I don't need to draw more. Okay, so let me think about this. My plan, depending on what they have, right? Because uh, knocking out an Arctic Beaster is much harder than this. Okay. I could just attack this friend twice as well. Potentially. Just get the knockout here, that's pretty good. Get three cards. Gensec, pretty useless unless we get Averyed. A lot of ways to thin our hand as well, that's decent. So we trade Mew VMAX for a Draw of VMAX. That's alright. If only I could have attacked the Draw done with energies a few turns ago, that would have made such a difference. And of course, now they have the Arcus V Star. <clears throat> okay. So maybe now the plan is just like I get to attack this Geraldon, need the other choice belt basically, and then I'll need the double power talent, and I need a counter stadium. I need a lot. Okay. Two cards. Probably Marty. Double turbo and research. All right. Oh, I'm a little scared here though. Maybe I should have attacked this draw done. Okay. What is the plan? I'm down my Marty, right? Yeah, so I cannot do anything to just top deck the choice belt. So with that in mind, what do I do here? I do 140. Okay. If I can find the other fusion strike energy, did I prize it though? I think I did, didn't I? Alright. I think I just go all in on attacking the active. Okay, no, I have both energies available. Alright. You know what? I'm gonna go. Automatic, the quick ball. Nice. All right, that's pretty good. I definitely, my goal was to do as much damage as I can to the fifth. This way, I certainly can. So I'm doing 160. They'll heal 30. It is what it is. I'll go ahead and do this. Fail it. So all I'm looking for now are my tablets, and I get fortune six. I have the switch in case they try to stall me for some reason. I have a boss, that's fantastic. Uh, okay, I'll leave it here. No, I'm not gonna leave it here. I still have item cards, I'm gonna draw more cards. I have the chromatic. So I'm actually just gonna fusion strike system for three more cards. All that matters is finding power tablets plus, um, plus boss this upcoming turn. So we're going to go, ooh, I almost messed it up. I guess I could have still copied Max Miracle. I can't believe I think a Stadium, though. I'm down two and I have ten cards left. So they might end up retreating here. They have 200 HP left. So I need both Power Talents. Confident I can draw my whole deck next turn. Not so confident, actually. Oh, wow, they don't even... Okay, I don't even need the boss. All right. And that's a beautiful, beautiful card to get. Okay, so let's just try to cut them off the chromatics. Tails. And heads. That's one. Okay, what if I grab Ultra Ball? I think that guarantees that I 
never miss. Instead of grabbing Power Tablet, I'm grabbing Ultra Ball because then I get to use this Ultra Ball, fail it, and then I get to Genesect for 5. I have 3 cards left and I get rid of 3 cards in my hand. So there's never any humanly possible way for me to miss the 2 Power Tablets. And now I just win. Right? There's one Power Tablet, there's a second one, and we do enough damage to say bye bye Duraldon and punch my opponent for holding so many Duraldons when they definitely didn't need to. Alright, um, UV Max pretty powerful. As I mentioned, my Egon Corp was not going to be available as it was my last prize card this game, so I'm glad things worked out this way. Uh, the scary turn was the previous one where we needed to hit that second uh, power tablet we had to be left, so it ended up working out. But, um, but yeah. Pretty cool deck, still very powerful, still a good deck choice for worlds as we are trying to be a bit more serious with our decks. No stone jurgers, no Draco Souls. <laughs> We're gonna be focusing on top tier decks for the Pokemon Training Card Game World Championships and expect a tier list as well from me soon. Bye bye!